First of all, I would like to welcome you um, back after the lunch. What I would like to do is um, giving you, um, let's say, a general focus and motivation about, let's say, the um, whole uh, topic of value creation in the world. Um, go deeper into the state of the art, especially for um, this uh, production control. Um, show your potential concept and then the physical implementation done in our testing field uh, in Berlin. So, um, the main challenge I want to briefly address because I was um, um, requested to uh, spend not so much time um, because we are behind uh, the schedule. Um, you can imagine the whole world with a lot of factories that you can see here um, in kind of a network with a horizontal and a vertical integration in it. And this implies, um, let's say, a kind of complexity. You have <coughs> suppliers, you have um, people who buy your final product and also at the same time competitors. Um, when we go now a bit deeper and have a look on our factory that we can see here in, uh, the, uh, in the yeah, value creation module. Um, and this consists of five value creation factors. Um, this, um, there, with the value creation factors, I can describe a factory as a whole um, in the sense that I say, what um, is the factory producing, the process, as well as the organization around this, the equipment, and the most important thing cover all um, is the human, um, the people who are doing the organization, who are doing the processing of the goods. Um, when we go now deeper, according to Wiendahl's logic that was also already introduced, uh, we can divide the factory into different factory levels. For example, a system, if we, um, 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 if we just um, 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 have a look on the system of a factory, uh, considering it as a black box, um, there are goods coming in or raw materials coming in and uh, maybe semi-finished or finished products out. Um, a kind of a system cell and station and at the end a component where I just have a look, for example, the movement of one robot in a specific situation. Um, what you can see is um, that we have uh, a huge overall complexity in the sense that we um, are not able to describe it um, completely. Um, and if we are now integrate now um, things where everyone is talking at the moment, for example, um, sustainability consisting of economic, ecologic and um, environmental um, um, dimensions, we can see um, that we have um, a cost pressure due to the uh, globalization. We have um, a shortening of the product life cycles, of course, in the same time, an increasing of the variance, um, sustainable developments, as already mentioned, and unpredicted environment. And the focus of the presentation, or wh where I want to go now deeper insight, is uh, to highlight um, the changeability of a factory um, in order <coughs> that it should be solved by help of the simulation for material flow as a direct control system. And what we are, or what I am um, mainly focusing on, um, is a material flow system in the way that you can see here um, um, in this graphic, the system where, um, let's say, goods are transported from one station to another station. And with a specific um, focus on the material flow control, which is defined as a synchronization of the information with the aim to bring the product at the right time, quality to the right place. Uh, in a more general view, we can see here this um, um, yeah, general description of the factory where the material, information and energy as input factors is considered and outcomes product, information and unfortunately lost energy. Having here an exemplary process um, starting at the receiving of the goods, we store them, cut, fit, machine, and so on. At the end, we deliver them to the customer. And when we assume we have a high degree of automation in this system, as you can see, we have um, different um, ways possible um, that the product is going through the factory. Um, we have, due to the motivation before, where I explained, um, a high um, a challenge um, in order to quickly respond uh, to changes while the processes should maintain stable. 
um, I think a basis uh, slide um, about such a PLC. A PLC is um, from the hardware side, we have inputs and outputs. That means outputs, I give a signal um, to an actuator. The actuator reacts in the corresponding way. And we have input factors, a sensor, um, who delivers me a signal um, that is later on then also processed. Uh, I need energy for a PLC, have a memory unit, and of course a programming unit. Um, they are, of course, uh, due to the historical development, um, different kinds of PLC. At the beginning, they were hardwired. In the meanwhile, we can um, talk about uh, soft PLCs, uh, where the control or the processing is done directly by um, always uh, industry computers. Having a look on the state of the art, um, uh, in order to, um, to have a look on the whole system life cycle, um, when having at the beginning the idea of creating a factory or creating such an automotive material flow system, um, different steps has, have to be conducted, especially layout planning at the beginning, mechanical construction, electrical, then we have the control system that has to be created. Um, this is in a, in a way a, conven a conventional approach um, in the sense that um, um, that this can be regarded as um, the situation it was maybe 30 to 50 years ago, hardwired um, um, control systems, um, the assembly, commissioning, and at the end, of course, the startup um, for the production. In the meanwhile, also um, computer added, uh, computer added tool were integrated <coughs> into this process uh, from the planning or from the, from the first idea until the startup. And due to this, the overall time from the initial um, idea until the startup of the series production um, was yeah, also dramatically lowered. Why? Because different um, phases were able to be performed um, sometimes at the same time. For example, the mechanical construction based on the layout that is now in a CAD, a computer added design. Um, we can, um, let's say, have influence on the mechanical construction so that we can um, um, do the electrical construction in the meanwhile where we have the mechanical construction. And this is just an example. Of course, um, in the meanwhile, we have also um, methods like virtual commissioning, but I will um, later on go into detail on this. If we go now a bit deeper into the topic of let's say, this, this, the changeability, um, now um, the phases are divided here um, according to the, those before. Um, we have, at, after the startup of the series production, a point of change. Things come up, pop up, um, that has to be taken into account. For example, the customer um, uh, wants or I increase the market share in a sense that I have to produce more um, cars, for example, then I have to go back this way and in the sense that I expand or modernize um, um, my factory and therefore I have to perform again a layout planning. Also, I have after this um, also to reconstruct the mechanical construction and of course I have to adapt my control system. So, and what I want to go uh, now a bit deeper inside is especially layout planning, the control system creation, and the virtual commissioning, because they are later on packed into one concept. Um, simulation um, is a tool um, that one application is that you can use it for the planning of the layouts, in a sense that you start to um, model your idea. You have a conceptual system. Um, through a, a requirement identification, task formulation, um, you come to the step of modeling and have um, a simulation model. By experimenting with the simulation model, you come to outcomes that you, of course, have to analyze. And maybe this um, simulation model has to be, let's say, redesigned because you um, saw that one machine is not enough for this case. You need two. Um, then you can put a second machine into the simulation model and uh, run the experiment again to come to a, um, let's say, kind of virtual factory or initial start um, that um, satisfies you. Then you gain improvements and can, um, in a, and can, let's say, create or implement this kind of strategy in your real factory. 
Similar to this is the creation of a PLC code or PLC-based control system, where you first of all determine a sequence of operation of the control strategies. Therefore, you are doing a flowchart, for example. In a second step, you do the hardware-software configuration um, in a sense that you assign every input and output a specific address on a kind of list. Um, after this, you program this um, control program. Um, there you have to um, have this, um, where is it, a flowchart that was drawn in step number one and have to program this according to the flowchart before. And a very important step is the testing and, of course, commissioning of the system only if um, the system or the PLC code in this case is tested enough, of course, your factory can run properly. And the third one, the virtual commissioning. In the meanwhile, there are also concepts available where you um, combine a controller that could be in reality or in simulation with a material flow system also in reality or simulation. Considering you have the controller in reality and also the material flow system in reality, you have a kind of traditional commissioning, commissioning in a sense it was done 30 years ago, maybe hardwired. Um, then the controller can be a kind of simulation where you see this is a sim uh, system model um, connected with a physical controller um, called hardware in the loop, a material flow simulation in yeah, material flow system in a simulation with the controller based on reality. You have a control model uh, connected to the physical system. And of course, the last variant is both in simulation where you have your virtual factory and your, let's say, control model. Where's the potential? The potential is that you maybe um, recognize that um, there are a lot of um, different um, softwares used where you often um, just try to translate the things that you've done in one uh, software into another kind of software. So and this is kind of a risky and long uh, procedure. Risky because uh, failures are yeah, probable. Um, of course, and furthermore, there's a potential um, to have a look on the job shop scheduling um, that also the, uh, through the simulation gives the opportunity to be performed in this kind of, uh, in this, let's say, virtual factory, virtual environment on the simulation. So the I main idea is to create a hierarchical uh, centralized uh, material flow system um, in one life cycle in the sense that the virtual commissioning, the control system creation, commissioning op and operation are combined within one software and furthermore, as let's say add on, a sequencing and scheduling can be performed so that we also take um, parts out of the production planning and control now into the simulation to have it more um, or nearer um, at the simulation. It is much more easier to perform material flow analysis um, based on real data, to um, um, develop alternatives, evaluate them, and improve them or um, get to improvements and can be directly uh, used for the control of the physical system. And therefore, um, there is, um, let's say, a communication standard that um, arised during the last um, years into <coughs> in, the, um, in the automatization. Um, it's called OPC. And this OPC, imagine you have, um, Im imagine you have a computer and you plug in um, a printer. So the first thing what the computer is, is doing, he is taking an update because he needs kind of a translation module um, uh, to share information with the printer. And OPC is nothing else, in easy words, um, an OPC is nothing else than a communication standard um, that, wa that evolved during the last uh, years um, to bring um, <coughs> devices from different, um, from different producers on one standard. And by this, it is uh, the simulation is um, able to communicate also with, um, for example, the I.O. modules in order 
um, to, um, uh, to control the actuators and read sensor data. So the concept is now uh, this is a bit, let's say, uh, a slide that is very huge. Um, I will try to explain it briefly. Uh, production uh, planning and control with a master production plan, capacity plan and material requirement plan is still available in the company. Um, out of the PPC, work orders and transport orders are transferred to, let's say here is the material flow simulation, to a module of the material flow simulation um, that is responsible for creating schedules. These schedules are created based on a system model where, um, the, physical syst where the physical elements of uh, the components that um, exist in reality are available. This system model um, corresponds with a kind of control model. The control model, as we are al I'm always talking now about um, one, or one software where all these um, three um, elements are yeah, included. And the control model is responsible for having strategies, strategies um, that directly control the actuators and reads the sensor data. And by this, it is possible, in this case, for example, um, by Profibus that corresponds uh, with I.O. modules to control, drive, actors, and sensors of the physical system. Furthermore, um, it is um, suggested to use, um, especially for the creation of these um, schedules, uh, which project has to pre uh, sorry which um, um, product has to pre uh, has to be produced when on which uh, machine um, is uh, created by help of a uh, genetic algorithm that is also a part of the simulation. An expert sets uh, initial um, parameters for the genetic algorithm and uh, by a selection, recombination, mutation, mutation um, a possible, or here, for example, we have a population, that means a possible a number of schedules that are possible to be um, um, driven on the real system. Through a selection, that takes place by the simulation. You can imagine the simulation um, uh, starts and, and tries um, to, to come to um, a good or a tries, let's say, tries to simulate each of these um, possible or uh, amount of possible schedules. And uh, th therefore, there comes, according to a fitness value, um, a recombination and a mutation that means a set of um, initial values gets changed. And at the end, there is probably a good solution for a possible schedule, not necessarily the best. The kernel of the concept um, physically implemented or, or, or the way in, in how the simulation now can correspond with the real um, production facility is that the control model communicates by an OPC interface with an OPC item table. OPC item table is more or less a table that um, is always updated from this side, also from this side where the PC-based controller um, with the current states of the sensors and actuators is located. Um, therefore, um, was um, Technomatics plant simulation, this software was used um, it's a discrete event um, simulation. That means that only if a state change um, takes place, also, um, um, let's say, the next event um, or the next, um, let's say, follow-up uh, procedure um, is triggered. That means as soon as in the OPC item table, for example, sensor 1 um, gives another value, um, it gets transferred to the control model, and the control model can um, act in a, yeah, say, corresponding way. All this is um, implemented in a material flow computer that is connected with a I.O. module to, um, of course, uh, talk with the sensors, actuators, and a drive. 
the implementation, how we did it, um, as I already said, we um, built a demonstrator in Berlin. Um, this was a, is a pretty old uh, system that was built in 1986, I think. Um, it's a double, bel a double, I don't know, it's a belt conveyor with two um, lines. Um, you can see here one, two, three, four um, um, belts, and here one long, and here another one. <coughs> Consisting of the conveyor line itself, where um, carrier identification is located, um, identification, that means every carrier can have its own number. You see this binary system quite old. Nevertheless, for this purpose, <coughs> sorry, absolutely uh, sufficient. Um, reading stations as well as kind of um, indexer that can change here the number or identification of the carrier. Here you see one more of these identification reader, um, a stopper. A stopper, they are um, located on it's in different um, on different positions here on the conveyor belt um, to stop the conveyor that is uh, maybe coming and <coughs> therefore there is a sensor um, so that the control model knows uh, at which time um, maybe um, is it, uh, when a carrier requests to get into the next kind of segment and Intersection lifter, they are located, for example, here, so that um, this carrier um, has the possibility to go straight or to turn left. Um, here, a conceptual um, drawing of this material flow system. As you can see, I told you, uh, position sensors and stoppers, um, intersection sensors, for example, workplace lifter, there are four this is just a lifting station that moves the carrier up and so that uh, the product, um, for example, can be processed, um, in this case by uh, a robot or something else. And every, um, let's say, every of these um, stopper is, um, you can imagine there's kind of a line where um, one segment and the next segment and one carrier can be at one time only in one segment. So it is possible to, that the simulation software or the control um, system always knows where is which carrier. So the technical structure um, was developed by using two computers connected by a kind of um, local area network, um, by, uh, by a local area network. Of course, I know this is not um, real time um, it's not, um, of course, made for real time. Nevertheless, um, the material flow computer that consists of the control model um, is connected by Profibus to the I.O. module, and here you have the real time functionality. In this simulation system, uh, where the system model and the control model also, say, let's say, a duplicate of the control model um, lays for performing experiments. For example, imagine one station or uh, one robot. Um, breaks, I don't know, um, uh, unexpected. And then there's um, the strategy, there's the simulation software um, can start to simulate alternatives to come to a schedule um, to avoid uh, to use, uh, avoiding to use the station in order that we do not have to stop the band, uh, the, the, the conveyor belt, uh, because one robot has failed. <coughs> All right, and um, Two days ago, we were uh, in Palestine, and in Palestine, I saw really a quite similar kind of system, uh, uh, also a small conveyor belt um, produced by Festo Didactics. And of course, with this kind of, um, let's say it's also quite simple learning uh, for the students, um, it is also possible um, to um, try such concept like the one I proposed here. And this is kind, um, of course, you see the references. Um, and this is kind of a, let's say, um, yeah, a final conclusion that also old systems can be reused in an adequate manner for, um, especially for the training of <coughs> um, students, in a sense that they um, can or that they can train uh, such um, current state of the art applications, also for research. 
um, because we, um, a lot of time, we, we thought about uh, should we recheck our conveyor belt? Um, and of course, it was good that we not did it. Um, we could show that we can, I will use the word pimp, um, uh, the production facility um, by just buying and applying new um, softwares. So, and the last point that I want to mention is, maybe you ask yourself, what is now reactive, what is now predictive? Um, reactive in the sense that um, if you have changes in your system, um, easily you can uh, do a material flow simulation that proposes another kind of strategy that directly can be used, again, uh, to control the physical model uh, for example, unpredicted um, machine errors, and predictive in the sense that um, the simulation software can also have elements of, um, let's say, self-learning. It learns how long does um, a failure, um, for example, occurs, and based on this, uh, that can be included also um, um, to say the maintenance guys, um, hey, please have a look and check, I think there's something um, coming for, for future. But of course, uh, I heard the uh, presentations before, uh, there's still a lot to do in research. And yeah, that's my final conclusion. Thank you for your attention.